Hello, welcome back to series two, episode kind of two. Oh no, don't say that, do I? We don't say. It's it's a it's a, it's it's an episode in <laughs> within the second series. <laughs> Guess which episode of hashtag, hashtag nailed, nailed it. it with oh me. Oh my god, we're saying it together yeah, now. It's you, awful. You just say awful. <laughs> so bad. Dreadful start. <laughs> Should we start again? Yes. No, no, just just carry on. Plow okay. through. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to just hello. Yes. Hello. We really need to plan these things yes. down a little yeah, bit yeah, better. Yeah. You know, other people really take these things very mm. seriously. They I start feel like song, we need to. Poem. Yeah, exactly. Hi, everybody. Oh. Welcome to Hashtag Nailed It. I am Tova Lee. And I'm Michael Lee. How are you? I'm good. Nice to see you again. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. really good. Um, you guys... What? We're back. Why are you No, no, because I know this week is a very weighty subject. It is. It's a very serious uh, topic, right? Do you want to present it? Do you want to say what we're talking about this week? No, it's... Uh, we. What did this come about from? There was a... Because you did something on the radio about I it, didn't did. you? I did. There was a report out... I don't know who did the report and the survey or whatever. There was a report out recently, mm-hmm. which was discussing underage drinking with children and how many parents or introduce alcohol to children around the dinner table. Now, we all kind of assume in France, wine is part of that sort of culture and <laughs> meals and stuff. I love how so, you're looking at Leon. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not saying he's that alcoholic. What are we talking about? I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> and, um, and basically, the survey said that basically, middle class families mm-hmm. are the kind of, not worst, the sort of, I can't remember what exactly said, but they're out of any kind of social strata. They were basically giving their underage kids more alcohol than working class families. I think you presented this really badly. Uh, maybe you should describe like Really describe badly. It. No, I don't think that was the article. It's just like more and more parents are introducing, are, you know, giving, allowing their kids to try uh, alcohol around the dinner table at an early age, as early as 13. Right. Uh, because the theory behind it is like, uh, you know, I'd rather they try it at home or, you know, they're going to drink anyway, so might as well give it to them, you know, at home or at that age they're not going to like it, so maybe it's actually going to repulse them and mm-hmm. have like a positive effect. They'll have like a positive effect, um, right. attitude towards alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, especially in Britain, where I obviously not everybody's like that, but I think in generally, generally speaking, there's a lot of binge drinking and not a very well, it's pos- a drink culture. Yeah, isn't it? but not a very some countries, but not a very not a positive drink culture. Drink culture. It's not yeah. like oh, let's uh, you know, uh, you know, let's uh, admire this, uh, you know, fine wine. It's more like binge drinking. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know as as a British person though, I, I it, it, it certainly as an overview certainly got better. You know, again, when I was a kid, probably even a teenager, even a teenager. When did I was? When was I a teenager? Thirty, nineteen eighty. I don't remember. Not I was looking, but I don't really remember going to the supermarket and seeing a range of wines from around mm. the world. We used to have wine boxes. Yeah. There was wine boxes that you used to take to parties. You still wine boxes, <sighs> now. whatever. Yeah, yeah but there is. But that was tap? that was pretty much what it was. And then the beer you had Watney's Party Seven, these massive barrels of beer that used to sort of hit on the top, and that was you know poetry. You know now you've got craft ales, you know organic wine. It's it, it's a completely different culture. Mm. You can argue it's a bad thing that this is even more readily available than anywhere, but. I don't know. I think from my, from my perspective, age group, you know, I think most people my age, when they look back at their first drinks, there are probably warm beer, horrible spirits that, you know, it wasn't like the choice you get now. So when, just a curiosity, when was, when was your first drink? When did you have your first Well, I can't remember my first drink. I remember the first time that I was ill from drink. <laughs> was on a school trip when we were 14. It's always we went, a school trip. We went, we went to Belgium on a football tour, 14. <laughs> and, you know, in, in Belgium, France, you get the little bottles of beer. They're just the little, very small size. They're little glass bottles okay. with a... Um, I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, they're like, like a half bottle things. And... Um, what, like miniature? Yeah, not miniature miniature, but... I don't know, they're like sort of stubby things. I can't remember the name of them now. Just little, get little mini bottles just down. Anyway, so the teacher said, 
I know you're all going to have a drink when I go to bed, blah, 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 or try and get a hold of it. You could all have one and like allowed us to have, no. allowed us to just have one. But they were small. I mean, it was the sort I'm of, in shock. it was like a sort of, that sort of coffee That's shocking size. to me. Well, anyway, that was, that yeah. was the 1980s. Wait, so one, you had one of those and you were ill? No, no, no. We had more oh. than one. Oh. We said we had one. But where did you get them from? It's one, one of the, one of the kids who obviously looked a bit older, well, maybe on the ferry or whatever, oh. managed to buy some. Wow. And so he was like, well, you've got them now. I can't, you know, anyway, that's basically my Why first... Why did she take them away? It was he. I think he was drinking with us. That's, that's shocking. Um, <laughs> but I certainly had more. And I remember waking up, and I was sharing a bed with a kid, because we had to, had to. And I woke up in the morning to realise I'd been sick all over the bed. Oh my God. And I had to hide the bed in, because they saw that people had been ill. Then he went... Oh. Door to door. Who else has been drinking? Who's been drinking? I was like, oh, God, hide the evidence, hide the evidence. No, I'm fine, I'm fine. So that was my first memory. Wow. I mean, I certainly had a drink probably at home, a sip of wine. But I think at that age, when you're very young, your taste buds aren't developed to sort of go, oh, this is a wonderful Merlot. I mean, it's not that you're 30. It wasn't, you know. Yeah. So do you think, like, I'm just wondering, do 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 you think there's truth to that theory that if you start drinking early, with the supervision of your parents, then potentially it will give you a better attitude towards alcohol later in life or repulse you from alcohol or just have any, is there any benefit in it in your opinion? Uh, Again, I can only talk from this country. I don't think so. You know, I think when you're young, for example, I can't drink tequila. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, the first time I had tequila, it was warm. It wasn't very nice. I had too much, violent ill. (laughs) So it's put me off tequila. Right. So people go, oh, but tequila, you don't understand, Mike. It's as good as whiskeys. It's different types. And oh, one, oh. But I have no interest. Yeah. No interest in it. It doesn't interest me. Um, but I think as a kid, you experiment. So even if your parents gave you a sip of a beautiful red wine, mm-hmm. good, well done, enjoy it, whatever, with, with your steak or whatever. When you get a bit older and you go to a house party or you go to someone's place for sleepover and the, the parents are going to bed, you get down for midnight feast and you go through the parents' drinks cabinet and there's an old bottle of, I don't know, Greek liqueur, some green liqueur that they brought back from some package holiday, you're probably going to give that a go with mix it up. You're mm-hmm. going to mix some drinks up, try this, oh, that's a nice colour, try this, Dubonnet mixed with Advocar and all that. I think kids, you experiment because you think it's fun. And I think by getting violently ill <laughs> from those things, in a way, I think it helps you choose later on in life what you're going to drink and not so drink. So you just said, because so you, you said that you don't think it makes sense, but now you're saying it does? Like it doesn't well, I, have a benefit? You think... No, I, I, my point is, I think even you have a good red wine, you're still going to end up drinking oh, shit alcohol yeah. as, as a kid. Yeah. You know, um, that's it, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just think it's, I know some people go, oh, if you can afford it, just drink good alcohol. At the end of the day, it's all alcohol. Yeah. I know, and everyone's different. You know, you, you know, I can't drink loads of white wine. You don't drink red wine. It affects you in different ways. Yeah. But I think as a kid, I mean, I, I'm not totally for the idea. Yeah. I think 13 is far too young. I, I agree. I think 16, yes. 15, borderline. I think sort of 15, 16, with a meal, with family. Try that. You're, you're watching them. You only give them a little bit. Yeah. But it depends how much how well you know your kids. If yeah. They, if they run with a certain crowd and they go around to Dave's house and Dave's parents are never in and they, you know... And he goes, have a beer, have a vodka. Kids are going to, unless they're really sensible, kids are going to go, almost feel pressured to try it. As opposed to, no, no, I know this isn't good for me. I'm sorry, I'm not going to yeah. drink. You, I think you wouldn't, most, most kids wouldn't do that. Yeah. You feel like you've got to be seen to do it. I agree. Like, I So I was asked this question on uh, BBC Scotland by mm. Kay Adams. Yes. Um, and it was following this article that basically said that more and more parents are introducing alcohol at home during dinner time. And the age was 13, as young as 13. And she had a few people on the air talking about mm-hmm. this topic, including a health a doctor. A doctor who was talking who about... Who alcohol abuse. Yeah, who was talking about the effects that alcohol has yeah. on young children. Mm-hmm. So it's obviously not recommended mm-hmm. for young yeah. children. Um, and he was, he, she was talking to a mother who's actually f- from France, a French mother, who mm-hmm. has teenager, teenager children and has introduced alcohol mm. uh, to her kids. Um, I personally 
think that yes, kids are going to. I mean, most kids are going to drink underage. That's I think a, a fair assumption, especially um, in America. I mean, America's twenty one. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Of I course. Mean, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. Of course. Under legal age, but twenty one. Like, yeah. But I think that thirteen for me sounds quite young because I'm thinking not. Every 13 year old's going to drink. Like, I didn't you know really what I mean? think about and it. And I'm like wondering, why do, we, why do we open a door to something that potentially is some children are, are not really curious about? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they they'll, might get curious about it I at some point, but about it I wasn't 13. at 13, no. no. And I know it's a different generation, so yes. maybe things are happening quicker now. So, like, I don't want to be naive about it. But yeah, and, for it's, me, and it's more readily available. But 13 now. really does sound very young to me. Absolutely. And I'm thinking a, a childhood without alcohol to me sounds like a much better plan uh, and the other thing I think is that I think there's so many shades of gray in the middle between uh, being a parent that goes no just no to everything and like shutting so your they eyes rebel. you mean the kid who rebel yes, then yes and, and putting your head like uh, how do you say uh, putting in your head sand. in the sand and pretending like your kids are not going to be drinking or trying drugs mm. or having sex or all the things that like as mm-hmm. parents you're scared of uh, to a parent that goes here you go Here's the alcohol. Here are like here's the you know I don't know the mm. drugs. I don't know whatever it is. Here's the cigarettes. Like what's mm. the difference, right? Um, and I think there's a lot of in the middle. So for me, it's like I think we should talk to our children about these things. I think there should be 100 percent an open dialogue well, alcohol about is these what things. It does yes, to you. yeah. And also underage drinking, and also like you know why why you know everything. Did you, you have know? friends who were like, oh? Uh, my parents caught me drinking, so they said, oh, you wanted a vodka? Drink the whole, not the whole bottle, but that's dangerous, but drink more so they're violently sick. That whole thing about, I'll make sure you, you never enjoy this drink no, again. No, kind that, of I also have to say, that's also bullshit. Well, you that know, I caught you smoking also, a cigarette, it doesn't smoke work. the pack. It doesn't work, you know. I, I, I've heard people say mm. when a child tries alcohol early, they're not going to like the taste, so they're not going to drink later. It's bullshit. Of course they are. Like I don't. Well, there's think alcohol that, pops. That, that, the, the, the that black makes cup, any but there's, but there's, you know, yeah. well, in my day it was hooch. It was called. But there's certain alcohol pops that have lemon black currant flavor yeah, that surely like are that. designed like, to be attractive taste. yeah to, and doesn't to taste kids. like alcohol yeah you know yeah of course so uh, well most of the sweet cocktails you can get there away with putting alcohol in it and doesn't taste but the other thing i think is this and i think this is what parents need to remember i honestly think that what kids learn from the most is what they see it, they learn from ex- from you could be you could abuse alcohol mm-hmm. let's say you are somebody who d- drinks too much who dr- drinks and drives who abuses yeah. alcohol right yeah. who your attitude towards alcohol is not a healthy positive attitude mm-hmm. but you talk to your kids and try to teach them about a positive way and forbid them from having alcohol what do you think they're going to learn their your words are maybe a 1% and 99% yeah. is your behavior yeah. so like that's you're, you're what right. that they see right. so for example i'm going drawing back from my own experience i grew up with parents who i don't think had a positive attitude towards alcohol and growing up I saw and I know it was the 70s and 80s and things were different but I saw I saw you know drunken driving I saw like a lot of not positive use of alcohol so my point is that I think as parents we have a our responsibilities to set a much better example. If they see you sitting around a table enjoying a glass of wine or two glasses of wine with your lovely steak during dinner, you don't have to give them the glass of wine to prove the point that wine is something that you enjoy with dinner. Do you They've agree? seen it. They but see you do it. They're going to learn you, that lesson anyway. If you take the argument that kids will copy or think this is a normal way of dealing with alcohol, let's say you're one of those unfortunate people who had a parent or parents who are alcoholic and it, it, it manifests itself maybe in a violent way. Maybe your mother or father mm-hmm. used to drink and get violent with the kids, their partner, yeah. and you see that. And therefore, at a certain age, you associate, associate alcohol with that behavior mm-hmm. and you see that as a norm that, oh, when I owe oh, alcohol, I'm really feel depressed today i'm gonna get hammered and yeah, pass out whatever. i think it, i listen That's, but you know, i think people uh respond differently to things that happen to them in life there isn't one rule i've heard people say that they've had alcoholism in their family which may, meant that they don't even right. drink alcohol yeah, exactly. they, they go, don't go, want go anywhere the near way. it because you they go, the, they other go the other way and i've heard people who have said the other thing so i don't know right. if i can make a generalization okay um 
But I, I generally think, you know, what I said, that people need to just set a, a, a much better, a, a good example and have an open dialogue and a conversation. And also I think, you know, like I consider myself liberal, to be honest, like and mm-hmm. happy to, to openly talk to my kids about anything. And, you know, we've talked about sex, for example, in this show many a times. And, I, you know, I want to believe that if and when, you know, my kids are ready to do whatever experience, I'm going to be there for them no matter what, like no mm-hmm. matter what it is and all that. But I do think that there's that and then there's our generation coming from being kids of parents that were all about authority. I feel that sometimes we we tend to sort of forget that we also need to be the ones to set to put some boundaries down mm. for our children because we're so anti boundaries because how our parents were. Like mm. do you know what I mean? Like my parents and I think your your parents probably were the same generation ish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're all about like you do this, you do that. There were a lot of rules. There wasn't a lot of discussion. Whereas today's parents are much more that you we listen to our children. But mm. I mean, I, I think me and you like, uh, do you know what I mean? Like you, we listen to our children. I think it's important to put boundaries is mm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And, and and some parents are scared of doing that. Yeah. There's this whole idea of being your, your kid's best friend. And I think that yes, one day hopefully we'll be best friends. But at this point they also need parents, mm. you know, to teach them right from wrong. And my daughter, our eight year old asked me that she, we have taught, we have conversations about that topic. Like she'll say to me, explain to me like why parents, uh, make the rules. Like why, why do you guys like tell us yes or no about certain things? Like why it, it, it's a great conversation to have. It's a really good question. You know, it's a really, really good question, but I think we're scared sometimes to sort of be mean parents mm. or do you know what I mean? Yeah. But going back to the, 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 the this, this survey, you know, I, I did, I can't remember the results, what percentage was at 13 and all that, but it's, it, I don't think it went into detail about how, parents introduced the alcohol so was it some people as we sort of touched on before you know oh we're on holiday in italy and this is a lovely homemade wine by you know whoever there and we're eating this and you know whatever or do you just get some people going right you're 14 it's time for you to try your first beer yeah and just, what yeah go on try it. go on no you'll like it. you'll like it so try have a beer have a beer you know yeah. what 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 levels are is it introduced to people? And as you sort of said, how is it, what is the conversation you have with them? I mean, for example, you might say, oh, I'm going to give you an education now. There's white wine, there's red wine, this is how it's made, blah, 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 blah. And it becomes like a sort of educational chat about how certain things are made as opposed to, yeah, and I or, guess- you know, you'll, you'll get really pissed. And I guess also the question is, what is it, your 13-year-old, at dinner goes, oh, can I just have a sip of wine to taste it? Mm. Maybe, yeah. But whether it's like, oh, a sip, pour, pour a them a glass of wine, of wine and yeah. just sit there and have a glass of wine. Yeah, like exactly. You're 13 year yeah. old. Yeah. Like, I would struggle with that. Yeah, like, yeah, my yeah, answer yeah, to yeah. that would be yeah. no. A taste, a sip of wine, yeah. potentially, yes. Yeah. I don't think that's again, the end of the but, world. But it depends. But what, yeah. if, what if one of our daughters came back and said, my friend, my best friends and all that have tried this and that and that, and I really want to try blah, blah, blah. I think it's a question how it comes, yeah. comes along. Yeah. As well. But mm-hmm. I think you're right, going back to the thing, this phoning you did, knowing that the health dangers mm. of let's, alcohol, because we're talking about alcohol, and how it affects your brain cells, your body, your senses. I think that conversation with children is, I mean, you could probably strike the fear of God in them by going, mm. this happens and this and that and that. And as you said about the fear of, even one of them goes, I'm not going to drink, but then getting into a car with uh, someone yeah. who's older, 18, who's had a few drinks, yeah. could be far more damaging, God forbid, in a crash, yes. than them having a, a, a glass of red wine. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, you're right. And that is one of the biggest fears, by the way, like, for yeah. sure. Like I said, I I don't know, that. Uh, I honestly think it's about setting an example. I really do. I think if your children see that you never get behind the wheel when you're drunk, that you are responsible, and they've been with us out on occasions where we've had drinks and we've 
gotten an Uber or not driven yeah. and they know that we're, the reason we weren't driving is because we've had a drink. Yes. I think that's so important Absolutely. that they see that and they understand that and then yeah. hopefully it will make it less likely for yes. them to do it You know, when they're in that situation plus talk to them about it. Yeah. It's funny because when this thing came up it was when we were away mm. and I was in the car talking to the producer yes. um, and, and she was asking it. me questions. So the kids were at the back of the car and they heard my conversation mm. so obviously our eldest was very interested and that started a dialogue about it in the yes. car with the kids, which actually was great to yes. have that yeah, conversation, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, because it's one of those conversations that you yeah. think, well, are they just going to naturally happen? And it wasn't like, one of know? those kids, we need to sit down and discuss Yeah, 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 it was like, like spontaneous. Heavy like, con, God, what's all this about? Yeah, totally. But the one question that Kay Adams asked on the radio show, the mom from France who, again, like she made valid points, you know, she said they don't, like they're not big drinkers and, and uh, you know and 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 it's not it's it's about like like you said admiring a good wine and sort of yeah. really understanding like what you drink and all that um Kay asked her, but would you give your so she said and she went i wasn't i wasn't pushing alcohol to my kids they asked me can i try it and i was yeah, like yeah. yes so then Kay said but if what if they asked you for a cigarette mm. would you give your 13 year old a cigarette to try you know, mm-hmm. so anyway, she said no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Kay said, "What's yeah. the difference then?" And she said, "You're right. Like I don't know. I've never thought about it. Like what's the difference?" Oh. So what do you think to that? What's the difference? I think I'm not a doctor, but I think tobacco is a far more or nicotine is a far more addictive drug, whatever you want to call it, than than alcohol. I think have I think having your first cigarette at any age is pretty disgusting. Anyway, I don't, I don't, and when any kid who's had their first cigarette, oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. I think it's like, oh my god. Um, but I think it's far more, far more addictive um, at, at that age, or any age than, than alcohol. I think is it? I don't I know. So. I, I actually don't know what's more addictive. I don't see any difference between the two. Oh, really? To be honest, no, I don't. I don't. I think they're very different, that they're very different. But I yeah. actually think that... Um, Teenage smoking's really dropped dramatically. Though, yeah, but I... Yeah, I think because, because the, the cost the, uh, more than anything. Yeah, that. But also, I think, like, uh, I think a young, the young generation, like people today, they're so aware of health. Yeah, much more so. They're so mm. aware of health. And you do see less and less people smoking mm-hmm. and more vaping now and all that type yeah. of thing, you know? So, uh, But for me personally, I actually think alcohol is far more dangerous. Not because of the addictive thing, just because of the drunken uh, driving right, and because mean. of the violence that could be, you know, linked yes, to it. Yes, Fights yes, and stuff like that. True. Blacking out at parties, you know, yeah. date I'm, rape. Like s- all these things that are associated <coughs> with I don't, uh, I don't with know. Would you say that c- cigarettes know? have more of a long term Yeah, obviously. Thing, obviously. I and I also don't think I'll you get addicted to cigarettes like from <laughs> one cigarette, <laughs> no, whereas I think not. you can get into a lot of trouble just by getting drunk once. You but know? again, it's, you know, you look at relationship to alcohol and look, I never went on those kind of Ibiza, what's it called? Fac- what's that place in begins with an F that everyone goes to in Greece or whatever? Falicari or Kos? Mykonos? No, no, no. It's Fal- anyway, it begins with an F. But, you know, <laughs> Benidorm being another one in Spain. These yeah. holiday I've resorts. Never been to Ibiza? Yeah, I've yeah. been to Ibiza, but not when I was 16, oh, 17, okay. 18, 19. Mm-hmm. So you get holiday resorts in Europe, mm. which specifically, not specifically, but pretty much cater for kids having their first holiday aging 18 yeah. to go out cheap drinks yeah. half price you know shots and all that and it's you see there's there's loads of doc, loads of tv series yeah. about them and you see people collapsed on the floor blind drunk yeah. getting into fights and you look at that and go how did we get to this yeah. what happened in our society that this became a norm and something that people look forward to I just like people point save out. up people do get a summer job they save up all summer to get or whatever whatever job it is a Saturday job I just save up to go out. away with their mates to get absolutely <laughs> bladdered I just want to point out that I had that holiday did you? yeah when oh. I was 18 I went to Kos oh there you Greece, are okay yeah, with a friend <coughs> And I was drunk for a whole week, yeah. riding a motorbike right. with a bikini on, right. without a helmet, for a whole week. That's what I did. That's why I'm saying, I honestly, like, I think, you know, like I said, I'm not proud of it. It was the stu- one of the stupidest things I've ever done in my life, is get behind a wheel drunk. But mm-hmm. I did do it. And I, you know, I did it a few times when I was young. Mm-hmm. And I honestly think it was because I had seen it. 
I had seen it at right. home, and I never realized how dangerous it was. Yes. Like it didn't cross my mind because it was. Killed someone. I could have killed myself. I could have killed someone. It was the, honestly yeah. the most irresponsible thing I've ever done. And I would never, not in a million years, do that again. And I am mortified and really petrified that any of my kids would ever do what I did. But the only thing I can say that I can do different, that's in my power to do different as a parent now, is not to give them the alcohol, but is to talk to them about it. Mm. Nobody talked to me about it. Like, mm -hmm. it was one of those taboo things that you just don't talk to your parents about. Like, I'm, 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 a, I'm hoping they're seeing a much better example of how I drink now and mm -hmm. just not, you know, I'm not a big, I'm, I like to drink, yeah, of course, when I go out, but I'm not a big drinker and I definitely do not drink and drive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one thing is just the example that I'm setting. And the other thing is having a really honest, open conversation. And I would mm -hmm. probably tell them about the mistakes that I've done as well, you know, yeah. because I think it's important that your kids don't think that you're some sort of like uh you know, alien who has never lived and yeah, doesn't know true. what they're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who's like, oh, you know, mom, whatever. But yeah, do, I think do you it's know good I mean? to have those stories and go, I did a very silly thing when I was young, blah, 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 blah. Learn, basically learn from my mistakes. Yeah. Oh, my, our daughter today, this morning, said to me, you know, mom, sometimes you need to learn from your own mistakes. And did like, she? Wow. God, she's only eight. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I literally had nothing to say. I went, you're right. Sometimes <laughs> you have to learn from your own mistake. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> yeah, it's very smart. Uh, so yeah, so um, I feel like we were very one-sided on this conversation. Because I know, listen, I posted about this and, you know, a lot of people disagree. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that, you know, they want to be there for their kids for their first sip of alcohol. But, but, we're, not, but we're not saying... No, no, I'm not, not saying... We, we never no, said yeah. you shouldn't do it full stop. Yeah. I, I think, as you just said, it's... it's. I think it's a combination it, of a lot of things, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's no? a wrong or yeah. right here. Yeah. Well, there's a wrong, you know, here, have a whole glass of wine, whether even they don't want it, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I just think it's yeah. really interesting. And, like and I think what you said was right, is like to really know your kid. Because, again, if you've got a 13-year-old that's so not interested in it, then why, why even open the door? Like, why even bring it up, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. I wouldn't. It's just like, no. Yeah. It, uh, for me, personally, I'm hoping it won't, because 13 sounds very young to me. Mm. Okay, well, that was... Well, that was quite a heavy one, that wasn't was, it? Well, it well, we did warn you. We did warn you out there. It wasn't that we did heavy, say... Though. It was a weighty subject. I feel like we should have done this show drinking wine. I was about to say, let's get, come on, let's go to the pub. <laughs> let's go to the pub. And then drive home. And you see, like, I've, I've arrived to this age that I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not going to waste, like, just drinking for no reason. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I went out the other night to a pub and I literally ordered, like, sparkling water. Did you really? I did. And then tap water. Yeah. <laughs> it was really going crazy. But the prices. The these prices. Pubs, oh, the prices. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I do feel miffed when I go to... You know, I think most people know the markup on a bottle of wine, especially if you know that wine. You go to a restaurant and you look at it and you go, yeah. That's that wine is six quid in the supermarket. But you're still into and I'm wine. I'm laying out 30 yeah. pounds, all the glass of wine. Glasses of wine in London now, are what? At least six, seven, a large glass of wine would be nine, ten pounds. And you go, That's, that's that that's glass of wine crazy. has cost more that's than the crazy. entire bottle cost. And I, I, maybe I got to the age where I just go, oh, I'm not paying, that's ridiculous. That is crazy. Paying, this is crazy. I can't drink wine anymore. What do you mean? Of course you can. No, I can't. I think, listen, I have discovered this about myself. You prefer spirits. I can drink spirits till the, how do you say? The cows, cows come cows home. Come home. Yeah. Like you were talking about tequila. I yeah. can drink a whole, well, maybe not a whole bottle, but like half a bottle of tequila and I'll be like stones over. Like really, it just doesn't do it for me, spirits. Like mm. I don't get drunk. I drink one glass of wine mm. and I'm like, woo. I mm. think I'm allergic to yeah, wine. I think it's an allergic reaction. Like maybe, really, the maybe. sugar or something. Yeah, maybe. You know? Yeah, I, I can't, I don't touch wine anymore. Mm. Yeah, it really, it really bugs me. Okay, that's a, a, a whole other episode. Yeah. Alcohol that we like. And we'll go through <laughs> many, many examples with pictures. Yeah. <laughs> with and and pictures. we'll drink them as we do the show. I'll do like and we get steady, steady more pissed would as you we go along. Would you know how to identify like vodka, Jen? Like if you was like an idiot. That. Of course I would. <laughs> Stupid thing to say. <laughs> would you know like brands, like different types? No, I'm no. not a big sp well, no, 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 no brands. <laughs> I'm into gin now. I know. I you, feel like very kind of like. Uh, into your craft gins. What does you? it mean that I'm into gin now? 
that you're an old soul. Yeah, le- right? Yeah. It's like an old, like... Mother's yeah, Ruin, we used to call gin, Mother's Ruin. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so into gin right now. And we had a great gin. The it's a, it's gin. depressive as well, gin, isn't it? Is it? So they call it Mother's Ruin. What, it's what, got wait, something in it. it, it's, it no, no, the other way. If you're a depressed person, gin is not, not a good What? Gin's, gin, it's gin a is a downer? Gin is a downer. Are you joking? I'm, why am I joking? No, you just gin made that up. Gin is a downer. But oh, vodka's no, an upper. I, I, that I don't know, but right? gin, you, <laughs> what are you laughing, gin was known no? as mother's ruin, something in it, which I think what? most people down. Yes, I think so. Okay, I gotta. Well, look this into show this. will never be sponsored by Gin Company now. <laughs> but uh, that, that's really messed that one up. But I, I believe. No, wait, but I you know what I true. do like, by the way? Um, it. You know the little cans of gin and tonic from Ready mix. You're too lazy to make your own one. Yeah, or, or other Hashtag supermarkets. Hashtag not an ad, but or, like... Or other supermarkets. Yeah, they're everywhere now. No, Ready I like mixed. the ones that have M&S. Yeah. You know? They're so nice, mm. though. The pink one. Well, you see like really guys good. in their suits going back back to outside London from their jobs at sort of six o'clock with a sort of can of Ready Mix gin and tonic. Yeah. I find it quite depressing. Yes. That you kind of need that to unwind. But there we go. <laughs> I know I probably do it quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going off to hearing. Okay, well, this was wildly. fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Yep, see you very soon. Please subscribe to our podcast on I'm iTunes because you were like wrapping it up. Oh. And leave us a review. Five stars a nice review. would be yeah. nice. If you hate it, please don't. Leave yeah, it. ignore it. Uh, yeah. Move along. Uh, and that's it. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.